In order to make our materials look their best, we need good lighting. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the lighting objects available in Blender. We'll have a look at something called light linking and how to light a scene with just an environment. We'll begin with the light object. There are four types of light that you can add. They are point, sun, spot, and area. Each have their own subtle differences and uses. The default light happens to be a point light, and it's simply a point in space from which light radiates out in an even sphere. We'll switch into material preview mode and enable both scene light and scene world. If we grab and move this light nearer to the cube, you can see how it illuminates its surface. Let's position it about here and take a look at the properties in the Light Data Properties panel. You can give it a color. You can increase or decrease its power, making it brighter or dimmer. By increasing its exposure, this will scale the power of the light exponentially. The radius will create a softer point light, reducing the power of the light the further it is from the center of this ring here. Shadows are enabled by default. I'll just add a plane in here to catch some shadows. But should you wish to only add illumination, you can disable these. And if you need to match a specific lighting temperature, you can enter that figure here. Now you can change the data of the light object from point to any other type in its properties panel as well. I'll select sun. See how the object now has this line here. Now any parameters that the light types share will remain if you switch lights this way, such as the color and the strength. I'm gonna drop the strength of the sun a little. A sun lamp is directional. It doesn't matter how near or far an object is from a sun lamp, it will always be illuminated with the same intensity. However, its direction will affect how the shadows are cast. The next type of light is spot. Let's adjust some parameters just so we can see this a little more clearly. The spotlight object has a point of origin, a direction, but also a shape for the beam, controlling the size and sharpness of the light that is emitted. It too has a fall off, so proximity to the spotlight will affect how brightly or dimly a surface is illuminated. The last light object we have here is an area lamp. An area lamp casts a diffuse light over a set area. You can control the direction, the power, as well as the size and shape of the area. Like other objects, you can duplicate light objects with Shift D or create an instance duplicate with Alt D. In this case, you can control the variables for all of that light's object's copies. Now, if I add a sun object, the object container, as well as the data block, are named sun. But if I change this light object to a point, the object container and data block are still named sun until I change it. Light objects in Blender can also be light linked or shadow linked. I've set up a scene here, which has four lights, four cubes, and one plane. But the sun lamp has got no light linking on it. Therefore, it is casting shadows for all the cubes. With my sun lamp selected, I'll go to its object properties. Under shading, I have got two options for light linking and shadow linking. I'm going to click on the collection icon next to both and select sun. There's a collection here with sun and the cube in it. I need to do this for my shadows as well. Nothing seems to have happened just yet for the shadows because I have to link in this plane to the sun's collection. So I'm going to select the plane, hit shift M, this will link an object to a collection. 
and link it to the Sun collection. Now the Sun has been light linked to this collection, which will only illuminate and cast shadows for this cube and this plane. Global illumination is something that is easily overlooked, but we know that we can use the environment to control lighting. I'm going to have a little bit of a play around with something that is generated entirely inside of Blender. I'll use this demo scene from Kent Trammell's Cubicity course. I've split off a window here and set it to the shader editor, and I've changed the shader type from its default object to world. I'll go over to my world properties and create a new world texture. I'll click on the color input. From the drop down, I'll select sky texture. You'll now see that a node tree has been generated in the world shader editor, but we're going to control it via the properties editor. In my material viewport shading options, I'll enable scene world. Now we can see the generated sky texture illuminating our city. In the Properties Editor, I see this warning that tells me that the sun disk is not available in Eevee. I'll set my render engine to Cycles. Now I'll tinker with some of these parameters, and you can see how the lighting will dynamically change to give us different lighting conditions over the entire city. I could change the sun's rotation so that it looks like it casts a late afternoon glow. I can increase the density of the air or dust and get some really lovely effects. And if we added a camera, locked our view to it, and moved around inside the city at street level, we could see just how easy it was to create a gorgeous lighting scene for our set. So now you know a little bit about lighting. With what we've just learned, have a bit of a play around by adding lighting objects to your scene, or maybe a sky texture. And if you want to dive in further, we have a terrific course called Core Fundamentals of Lighting that you should definitely check out. And when you're comfortable with this subject, it's time to move on to the next lesson. <laughs>